Well, hey everybody, we are back at Gen Con 2021. We're at the booth, the Flying Frog booth, number 707 on the show floor. If you are at Gen Con, you should stop by, say hi, play in a game or a demo, check out the sales and specials we have going, or meet Mr. Aaron Lovejoy, Flying Frog studio painter. He's here on the scene giving people tips, uh, checking out their work, showing off what he's doing, and, uh, and also helping with the paint and take, where people can sit down, try their hand at painting, and he's he, he just critiques, he judges their miniatures harshly. Harshly. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, it's very welcoming. So uh, so this is kind of part three of our, uh, we've been chatting about different miniature painting techniques and that kind of thing. Uh, this stems from, um, you know, a lot of times we'll do more in-depth stuff, and then we'll get comments where people are like, man, you're telling me about these, these really veteran kind of things. I just need to know how to dry brush, that right, kind of stuff. Right. So, so that's what we've been kind of focusing on is going through the basics, the tools, the techniques. And, uh, and because this is our third video for Gen Con for this, um, we're, we're already through a lot of that basic stuff. But, you know, one of the things we haven't talked about at all is washes. That's right. That's right. Yeah. We talked about glazes in the last one, but uh, a wash is different from a glaze. In what way? Um, washes basically are, uh, <clears throat> they're designed to go down and crack. So you put them over the surface and then they have a tendency to kind of migrate the pigments into the cracks. It doesn't always work exactly that way, but that's, that's the, in theory what they're supposed to do. So, well, and um, it feels like a glaze is a watered down paint that you generate yourself. Washes you can buy. Right, right. And they're a little more oily. Yes. So yeah. I think probably there's, to get there's down some into sort of the strange crevices. concoction that will the, the basically facilitates the paint to move. Sure, it's, it's, it's like an ink. Yeah, 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 definitely. And so um, you can use washes like straight out of the bottle, or you can also uh, manipulate them a little bit to be tinted a different color if you want. There's a lot of fun things you can do with washes. Um, and I'd love to show you kind of how I. <laughs> Yeah, well, why don't we take a look at some different things on washes? So, we're going to grab this uh, little model here. This is one of the models from the paint and take, which, by the way, if you're out here, come on by and paint one up. Um, Different (laughs) model every day. This is one of the Forbidden Fortress uh, temple dogs. Yeah. So, um, So, in the shadow sets, you guys have two different kinds of washes, basically. There's actually three. In the creature one, there's the uh, dark toning. So we have. Oh, there's a dark tone and a strong yeah, tone in the, the soft tone. Uh, in the um, the first one, the the uh, heroes of the old west, we've got the soft toning. In the what creatures you know? of the void, we've got the dark toning, and then in the forbidden fortress set, we have the strong toning. I did not know that. Um, well, they're, I, they're right here. I, right here. I also <laughs> don't read bottles very well. Like I'm like, oh yeah, that's the dark one. Okay. Okay. So, so you got several different kinds. So the soft tone, maybe you use more on faces, stuff like that. Right. The dark tone for making shadows better. So, I'm gonna throw a little of this on my palette. And basically, the way a wash works is grab your figure, and what you're gonna try to do is just basically put it on and let it go down into the cracks. So. If I put it on here, we'll see kind of how it changes this color. That's like super, super dark. That is a very dark turning. <laughs> so, obviously that would be way too dark. So you could clean off your brush and just come back in and kind of wipe some of this stuff off. And I think that this actually is a great uh, thing to note is that, you know, painting is it's all in progress until yeah. until you're done with the mini it's it's just in progress so right. even if you get something a paint that's the wrong color if you get an ink that's too dark adverse effects yeah all you do is just add add water add other paint move the paint around wipe it off so you see I've, i'm kind of pulling that paint back off and i'm pushing it down around here so one thing that most people do is they put their wash on and then just leave it. Right. Um, and I think that's almost a mistake. Like sometimes okay. it works out good, but you're kind of just hoping that things go correctly. Okay. So I like to I like to uh, make sure it goes correctly. <laughs> right. So I always put it on and then wipe it off a little bit. Now if we grab our other color, so that was the strong tone, right? Right. Let's do. Dark tone. That was the dark tone. That was the dark tone. Okay. And this is the soft tone. Now, this another is the soft thing tone. is, uh, besides being like um, different dark, 
the dark tone tends to be a little more toward black. The soft tone tends to be a little more toward brown. Towards brown, yeah. So maybe you'll find that your tentacles need to have more brown in them because he's crawling along the grass or on the ground. And right. so that would probably give us a little bit better uh, shadow color. So I put it on like that. Again, take my second brush and just sort of wipe off the edges. And I get a more subtle shadow in there. Mm -hmm. um, which is nice. Now what happens if I, I'm using this, this soft tone and it's just not dark enough? Like, but I don't want it to be as dark as the other one. So I'll put a little bit more on my palette. I can grab some brown right. and just mix it right into it. And what this does is it gives me a hybrid between my regular paint and the, and the wash. So I get that and let's see if I can put it on this side. Basically, it's going to be more. It's going to be more opaque now. So I can clean my brush off, and again, just kind of wipe this out, just like that. So, put it on, take it off, and right. I do a lot of that. Now, what happens if I want that 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 um, brownish color, but I need it to be, let's say, more red? I can always add in just a little bit of red paint. And now I've got a reddish brown wash. Right. So these are really great because you can just put it on. See, I've got a completely different color now. Now you don't want to put too much of your opaque colors in there because right. it stops becoming a wash. Right. But I can put that in, wipe it off, and now the bottom of the shirt is slightly tinted red. Mm -hmm. And so that's another good way of using a wash in more ways than just the colors that you have. You right, know? right. Um, but generally speaking, uh, the washes tend to get down into the crevices of models. Correct. And so it, it kind of creates a gathered shadows effect. Right, right. So it's where, you know, where there are areas of depth, um, the ink gathers in it and, and darkens it. So it can pronounce uh, the detail. Spots much, much better. So if we grab this model back again, okay. we've got all this detail back here. And maybe we don't want it to be quite that light of brown, so you can always mix in some of the dark tone to it. Now we've got a little bit darker color. And I just put that in. Again, you, it helps to use a bigger brush just so you kind of douse it in there. But see how it's starting to get all those little cracks and crevices? It really shows off the detail. Yeah. So now, is this something that you would do where you would just right on the primered model, paint with a, a wash mix? Um, Rather than I, a base coat, I, or is I, this just for your? I don't. This is for a demo, but I actually have friends who this is how they start a model. Okay. And then they paint on top of this and cover up whatever was white with whatever color they wanted to. Sure, sure. But um, it's a viable option. Again, it's kind of like what's comfortable for you. Right. So most people they paint it the color and then they wash it. But you just got to remember, see how see how dark this white part was is now a brownish color. Mm -hmm. um, that's going to happen to whatever color was down below it. Right. So if you don't want that to happen, if you want really vibrant yellow on top of this, you're going to have to paint yellow back on top of it. Right. So it kind of depends on what your end goal is. Um, a lot of people they paint the colors too vibrant, and then they put the wash over it, and that kind of knocks it back dulls down. Dulls it back yeah. down. Yeah. So uh, the other thing is that. A lot of times with a wash, when it dries, it has a little bit of sheen to it, so right. it looks a little shiny. Um, I mean, do you use that as a technique? Like, I want this to be shiny, so I'm going to actually have a wash? So if I have a wash that's um, a little bit on the shiny side, right. um, see I just wet blended those two washes together. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> that wasn't part of the tutorial, I just wanted to see if it would work. <laughs> um, <laughs> so. Um, Typically, if something's, if I want to, uh, if I want something to look darker, I want it to be a little bit shiny. Right. The reason for this is when things are matte. Have you ever looked at matte black? It almost looks gray, especially in photographs. Interesting. Because my my theory is it actually holds on to the light. Once it hits it, it just stays there. If you have a, a glossy surface, it doesn't allow the light to stay. So it goes right through, hits the color, and the color goes right back to your eyes, which is black. So if you want something to be darker, I actually make it, I'll actually give it a little semi-gloss sheen to it. So if my wash is a little bit glossy, I want that to be glossy down in the shadows. Right. Because it will look darker. Um, in the highlight areas, if it's glossy, that sometimes looks not so good. Mm -hmm. So at that point, you might need to find some sort of anti-shine additive or 
like a matte coat that you can dull paint coat, on. Yeah, sure, dull sure, coat. that you can spray on after the fact. Yeah. Well, actually, let's talk about that for one second. Do you um, do you ever clear coat or dull coat your miniatures when no. you're done? No. <laughs> Is there a reason? Um, because I use, uh, we talked about this in some of the other videos. I use I do more complex colors, and sometimes those mm -hmm. colors are very subtle. Right. But I need you to see them so that you know right. that I did them. <laughs> right. Um, it always sucks painting something and then it, you, no one knows. Right. But so uh, when you dull coat, it actually blocks out a lot of that color. Right. I've seen. Have that you ever before. seen like Have you ever done highlights and then you dull coat and there's no highlights? Right. How right. did that happen? I don't know. It's like magic, but it's a bad kind of magic. Right. <laughs> it's a dark magic. <laughs> so just because there is a subtlety to your work, it right. could disappear. Yes. So it's like, yes, now there is a coating on it that protects your miniatures. Right. But unfortunately, we've just lost all the subtlety. And, and my theory to that is a, a simple matte coat. Um, to do it right, you put a thin coat over your whole model mm -hmm. and it looks good. Um, is really no protection at all. So mm -hmm. you just killed your colors and you're not protected either. Because right. that paint is so thin, it rubs off first and now you're onto my paint. I see. Um, so if you really want to protect your models, if you're like, you know, you got little kids playing with it or you're just very, you like to manhandle your models. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I have some friends like that. Um, I would recommend gloss coating the whole model first. And I've, I've seen people gloss coat two or three times. Mm -hmm. Now it's all glossy and it looks horrible, and then they matte coat. So they bring it back to a matte. The gloss is actually what's protecting your model, mm -hmm. and then the matte coat just brings it, makes it look not cheap. Less cheap. Yeah. Gotcha. So there's lots of little things to do there. Even in my gaming, I don't handle my models enough for me to justify uh, dull coating it. Right. But if you were to do it and you really wanted to protect your model, gloss coat, then matte coat. Okay. Um, if you're using dull coat, I would recommend Tester's dull coat. It's the best. Um, sometimes, here's another reason I don't I don't put uh, matte coats on, is sometimes it goes it frosts. Mm -hmm. So have you ever had your model go white? Right. That's horrible. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and there's really no way to fix it, so you got to repaint. So I don't like doing that. And the reason it does that is sometimes different atmospheric conditions. If it's too hot, too cold, mm -hmm. too much humidity, too little humidity, right. there's so many reasons it will do it. Right. And so that scares scares me to death. <laughs> you lie awake at night worried about a dull coat. <laughs> I mean, just for your guys' models alone, I spend right. you know fourteen plus hours on a miniature, sure. and to have it ruined because I dull coated it would be right. devastating. <laughs> right, right, so, right. And I know nobody's touching them, so it's you know it works out. But but definitely for gaming stuff, you know, it's okay to do the matte coats, but I would gloss coat first for full protection. Right. All right, so uh, we were talking about different washes, and uh, right. and you were doing even a wet blend of, of one wash into another color. Yeah. Um, but on the whole, you know, you were saying that you don't actually uh, paint this way, where you just do a wash just directly onto a primed model. Right. So most most often, you're doing a model that is already painted, already has base colors, Correct. and then you, you bring the wash in. Uh, to add shadow, or what other kind of effects do you use washes for? Um, I also use it for lining the model. So, actually, so you can go in and kind of like um, outline things. Yeah, we talked about it in our last video. Right. Um, where sometimes the smaller brushes, uh, when you put acrylic paints on them, it dries on the tip before you can even get it to the model. Okay. But these washes are, they're almost like water to begin with, right? So, I find. I used to never use those those zero one zero two zero three brushes, but now right. I can use them. And basically, I just take a little bit of. And this one, this was our dark tone, right? Or right. Was that That's the dark okay. tone. So it's very dark, and you can actually just bring it in and paint it right into the lines. Now most people aren't going to do this because it just takes a long time to outline an entire model. Mm -hmm. But like when I'm doing the studio models, those models are all outlined like three or four times the whole model because I want you to be able to clearly see everything. Right. And uh, another thing is like, you know, I've painted a lot of cowboys for you guys. Right. You may not have noticed this, but- Oh yes, um, I've noticed. I've noticed. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of leather on those guys. And so sometimes they'll have like a, a medium leather belt and then leather pants mm -hmm. and a leather jacket. They're all almost the same color. And I'd be looking at them, you know, and getting ready to photograph, photo them and I'd be like, I can't tell the difference between my browns, even though I use three different color browns. Right. As soon as you dark line, suddenly your eyes can differentiate between those subtle differences. Interesting. So it's really important to do dark lining, especially if you want to start getting your 
painting to like the next level. But even if you're not the best painter, you can still outline between all the parts. And so just bringing this, bringing in some of this and putting a little bit of this, oh, I think I just put white in my brush. That's the only problem with uh, having a wet palette covered in paint. You might get the wrong color. In yeah, there. yeah, yeah. You got to be a little bit careful. So bring this in. I'm putting just a little bit of paint right there, and I pull it down along all these edges. You pull it along this thing. But having this tiny, the tiny bristles on this brush, I can get a very thin line. So if your lines are too thick, it looks very cartoony and bad. Mm -hmm. But I can start just picking out all my colors like this. Right. So. This model looks a little bit weird on because we've literally just washed it. Right. But you know, I kind of don't mind those colors. Like, yeah, it's it a might, pretty crazy like, color scheme. Yeah, if, if, if you could literally wash an entire model just using different shades of wash that you created yourself right. and come up with something really cool fairly quickly. Just bring in the colors. Yeah. yeah. So another way of doing this sort of, uh, we call it pin washing because you're, you're just going right down the line. So let's say I want to put a little bit bigger part right there. So I can use that, take a clean brush, and erase it, and pull it right up into the shadows. So now I have this nice shadow that's the that nice dark line, but it has a little bit more of a shadow right there. Yeah, I can so, see that. I don't know why I'd want to do that in real life, but right. um, it'd probably be more down in the shadow areas, like down here. Put really dark right there. Wipe it off. Just erase that outside edge. And sometimes I just pull it right around the cracks. Then my OCD kicks in and I gotta fix that part. Right. <laughs> but well, it is nice because it really um, makes it pop. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it really, and really makes it pop. It, since it's subtractive, you know, when you first try this, you might have lines where you put the paint down and that's not good. Mm -hmm. But once you start getting a little bit quicker, you put the paint down, wipe it off. You get really creative with how those shadows start so, looking. Show them what you're doing with your hand here. This is a really interesting okay. brush technique. Look at, he's got two brushes at <laughs> once. Yeah, so uh, you could technically put the paint on with this brush. We'll do it right down here on the butt. Now, you want the color before it to be dry, but this, this, this green isn't dry all the way, but we don't have time for that. So I'm gonna put that on and then use the second brush. It's Pull. almost like chopsticks. The yeah, way you're holding those brushes. So you have one brush that is completely dry, right? And one brush that you've loaded with paint, or in this case, wash. In this case, it's not completely dry, but it's it's not damp either. It's uh, it's like it's moist, right? Ish. So one is for placing, and the other is for kind of blending. Wiping away. Yeah. Okay, interesting. And this works great on these washes. So you're doing this with two brushes. Do you yeah. go to three, four, five? How many yeah, brushes do you I do? I don't have enough time? hands, really, but. Uh, um, and I've actually used my brushes as chopsticks, like real life chopsticks. Really? Yeah. One time we were at a show and I didn't have chopsticks and we were eating Chinese food, and so we just <laughs> flip them around. I got a couple, -use brushes. couple strange looks from Liz. Um, yeah. <laughs> which. <laughs> well, let's talk about uh, metallics for a second. Okay. So there's, um, you know, there's in, in our paint sets. You know, we obviously have, I don't know, let me see, I don't know if you have all the colors out here. Right. But we also, we, 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 we have the pistol metal, which right. is a nice silver. Um, if you look you over there, gold. yeah, there we go. There's the loot There's gold, the loot and gold, then this and then one we is have bronze. The statue bronze. Right. Um, so these, even though they're all metallics, right. uh, they're, they're, you know, totally different in how you use them and how you want to wash them. Um, to, to warm them up and you know right. kind of get a finished look. Um, sometimes you want to take a metal and have it be rusty. Sometimes you take a metal and it's cold and you want it to look more warm. Right. Um, sometimes it's warm and you want it to look more cold. Right. Um, tell us about that. You know the the three different metals, how they work, um, what what washes that you would suggest using over them. So for for uh, for like steel. Okay. So we got the regular silver. I'm going to put a little bit of this uh, dark flesh. It's like a dark brown. Okay. And then um, we got black. We do have black. All right. I'll do my take the tip off trick. 
I just need a little bit of black there. All right, so when I'm doing metallics, again, uh, a lot of times I'll like wet blend things, so um, I want a shadow color. This, this color metallic, I actually really like your guys' uh, silver, mm -hmm. super good. Um, and so I'll just mix in a little bit. You can always mix in opaque colors to so your you're metallics. you're mixing uh, a, a unique metallic color right. before you even paint it. Right, and okay. this will be my shadow color. So we'll just move this over to here. So I've got a really dark silver. So let's say this is a completely metal statue. Um, okay. So I'll put this, so see that's very dark. Just move it right up the leg and then I'll grab our regular silver color and I'll paint it from the top. So I've got a shadow and a mid-tone just in my base coat. Oops. And then you always want to drop your model into the wet palette. That's all right. <laughs> oh my gosh. This will be my next contest miniature. So this is where I start with my metals. And then um, you're going to want to tint it with colors. So if we're doing like a rusty color, I want like an orangish brown. So uh, I've ruined all my soft tone ink here. So let's, let's move this over to an open part of my palette. This is actually what my palettes look like when I'm finishing a figure because I've got everything out and I'm fixing stuff. They're crazy. Do you have any, I mean, this is a really weird random side question, but do you have any kind of uh, organization to your palette about? Mm -hmm. Not really. No, you don't do like lights to darks or any. any I, sometimes I do at the start. I'll be like, okay, I'm doing green, so I have my lighter color green, mid tone, dark color, and then I'll have maybe white and black, and then some other colors I want to stick in it. And then everything just goes crazy as I'm painting, and then it looks right. like this. So at the end, my, my goal is where's there a spot on my palette to put new paint, and that's where it goes. Okay. That's basically, that's basically it. Nothing too, super exciting. So, uh, if you want to put some uh, rust and stuff on your model, you want like an orangey brown. So okay. I use the soft tone, and I'm just adding a little bit of orange to it. Not very much. I don't want too much. I still want it to look brown. Got that on there. That's still gonna dry, but you can see what this looks like maybe up here. So it's like a, it's like an orangey brown wash. And what I'll do is, as soon as this is dry, I can put that wash right over the metal in spots, especially areas I think would normally rust. Mm -hmm. So what areas on this model would collect water when it rained? Probably up here. So I'd have a bunch of rust up in there. You know, you can put some rust in between these legs right here, maybe even down low because mm -hmm. he's sitting on the ground. So those are fun areas to, to add rust. So got that rust color and then once I've got that on there I can always come back and add shades of orange just kind of stippled in to start looking like newer rust if it's really old rust old rust turns purple like purplish color and then goes black mm. so older rust would be really really dark yeah so if, if this guy was sitting in front of a temple and it was like ancient and no one had touched the tem temple in years right. he would be mostly black well I don't know, the rest might have eaten away the whole statue by then. Sure, but, sure. But, so you can actually tell a story with, with how new or old your rust is on the model. Right. Um, if, if, you're, if you have like an ax or something, like from an orc or, you know, like, I don't know, one of the tribal shaman or whatever, sure. um, on the blade would not have old rust because you're constantly using it and knocking it off. It might have a little bit of new rust or no rust at all because it's being used. But other parts, like the back of the blade, might be really old rust because nobody's ever cleaned it, you know? Well, I think that this is something that is a real strength for you, is that you actually think this stuff through. Because <laughs> I think way too much. Times, well, you know, when, when somebody's uh, playing Shadows of Brimstone, they might talk about their character's background. And right. they're, they're bringing something to the table where they're saying, like, well, I think that, that my character you know, started out uh, as a law-abiding, you know, citizen, but then turned to a life of crime because of this horrible right. incident that happened or something. So they create a backstory. 
you're kind of doing that as you're painting these guys and you're saying well you know has this been out for a thousand yeah. years and what has happened to it it's and something i always tell my students i'm like right. your 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 paint and your colors can tell just as much of a story as the model can right if they're both telling the story the story is very strong right you know if i had if i if i took like a uh Camelot night, you know, Knights of the Round Table, you know, right. and and I made him completely rusty. It wouldn't make any sense, right? Because those guys are like the guys, you know. Right. They're not. They're not. But then you have, you have your um, the undead conquistadors and stuff, and those right. guys are like, of course, they're going to be all rusty, right? Like, right. You know, they're coming out of the grave, you mm -hmm. know, basically, mm -hmm. and so it makes more sense to have that rusty and then have like the conquistadors themselves don't have any rust at all on their weapons. Right, right. You know, so it just, it's it's thinking things through a little bit and then, you know, and then applying it when it's necessary, you know. So you showed us uh, the washes and adding in some orange paint for a really good rust effect. What about oxidation? Oh, so like... Uh, you know, where it gets that kind of patina yeah, like the green so patina. kind of stuff. Uh, obviously, that's going to be more of a green color. Right. How much of that is uh, wash and how much of that is something maybe that you'd mix with the with the metal? Or um, maybe it's just paint. The, I typically just do it with paint. So um, you want like a, a dark teal to start with. Okay. So like, let's say, I think this is actually dry enough to do it. So let's pretend like uh, regular metal patinas. So I would take our tentacle green and then it needs a little bit of, I'm just gonna use this wash because it's really strong. It needs to be a little bit darker. So you could basically put this on again it, it looks better in areas where um, <coughs> where uh, uh, water could collect, but it could be anywhere. You know, if you look at reference photos and stuff, but like I'll put it on up here by the leg, and then I'll take my second brush and wipe it off. So it kind of gets that dark greenish color, and then. Um, I need like a little bit greener color, so I'm going to add some of our green off the palette right in there. And then I also need white, which I'm running out of. <laughs> so we're going to start creating kind of a tealish color. That might be... Sometimes you do these colors and they just don't work, so you got to play around with it a little bit. I think that's better. We'll put a little bit of green into it. Mm -hmm. I think when I did this one, I still had black in my brush, so it looks a little bit weird. So then you can come in and start adding. Um, I usually try to stipple it in a little bit because patina is oftentimes like a, a dusty looking. Mm -hmm. So if you kind of stipple the first color in, it looks a little bit better. And it doesn't necessarily have to be right over that darker color, but it, but it, but it looks better if it is. Um, and then I will add a little bit more white. So we get this really light color of greenish, almost like a mint color. Mm -hmm. Think of a mint julep given yeah. a summer day. <laughs> um, and then that will go in an even smaller area. So I just kind of put a little bitty dots. Stipple it. Just kind of stipple it in. So, and I'll do this all over the model. So, you know, there'll be areas of, and it's really nice, especially, I did this on silver, but when you're doing it on like copper mm -hmm. um, or bronze, right. you have a much redder paint and it mm -hmm. just really pops off. Yeah, that so, complimentary colors. Yeah. yeah. So, um, it's pretty easy to do. And I, I really love doing weathering. The trick to weathering is not overdoing it. Right. So obviously if I cover this whole thing in rust, it's probably because I didn't do a very good job painting it silver <laughs> mm. or doing my wash, you know, so I'm covering up all my mistakes with rust. Um, but but if you do just enough, it can really accent your model and make it look mm. really, really cool. Mm. So, um, well, you know, and you get, you get a lot of different effects, the combo of um, different wash colors and different metal colors right. and that kind of thing. And the same thing for just different colors of paint and different washes. So it feels like the more you paint, the more you understand what's possible. Right, right. And so, uh, I mean, you've talked about this before, how you used to watch paint dry yeah. to see how it looks at different Super boring, levels of dryness. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, it feels like maybe part of this, the lesson is just do it. 
yeah. do a bunch of it. Kind and the of more pay you paint, then the more you and try stuff. Also, yeah. don't don't be like, I know how to do this one thing. I'm going to stick to that. Try different stuff and then see what happens. Be okay failing because yeah. the more I mean, obviously it, it stinks when you fail because you're like, oh, I messed up this figure. I got to repaint right. it or something. But you don't always have to repaint it. Sometimes you just change things up a little bit. And as a commission painter. I learned a long time ago, if I repaint everything, I'm losing tons of money because it's right. hours that I spent. So I started getting really good at taking an error and, oh, maybe if I change the tone of this color just a little bit more to blue or something, right. it will look better. Right. And I started figuring out how to fix my mistakes. And right. that saved me time and money in the long run, right. but it also made me a better painter because I started just figuring stuff out. Mm. You know, um, If you're out there with a bunch of Shadows of Brimstone models, I mean, obviously you have a ton of models. I do. So it's lots and to practice you got with lots and, to practice with. Yeah. Just start painting it, you know, and don't be afraid. You know, try different things. We've showed you some different things with washes here. Try them out. You might yeah. find that you don't like 90% of them, but then there's something that just clicks and you're like, oh, that's cool. You right, know? right. All right, well, uh, we should probably wrap this one yeah. up. But, uh, but once again, um, you know, we, we encourage everybody to give it a shot. Painting can be really enjoyable and uh, relaxing, and the models end up looking much more interesting than just bare plastic. Um, so we encourage everybody to try it, give it a shot, and, uh, and then if you are ready, for more, for more. Um, you know, we obviously have done a, a series of videos uh, here at Gen Con. We have more videos on the Flying Frog uh, YouTube channel with uh, with previous conventions and things where, where Aaron has done great painting tutorials. Uh, but did you know that Aaron actually has something called Miniature Monthly where you can actually get uh, access to videos produced by not only Aaron but his cohorts? Yep. Matt DiPietro and Elizabeth Beckley. Right, also award-winning artists. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so you can get lessons from all these guys. And it's not just videos that they've produced, but you can actually get one-on-one -on -one training. So if you, wanna, if you want to find out all about that, where do they go? Uh, go to Miniature Monthly at Patreon, so. <laughs> all right, all right. Sounds good. Well, you know, thanks so much for your time, Aaron. It's always uh, really enlightening. You know, I've been painting for years, and yet, just in sitting down and talking to you about this stuff, I've got some new stuff I want to try. There's, there's always new stuff to learn. I mean, even Absolutely. for me, I'm like, the last couple of years, I've just been soaking up as much as I can. Cause, right. What? You know. See, that's I think that's like the spark of what makes you great. Because if you go, man, I'm the best. I've made it plateau. Yeah. <laughs> then, then basically, you'll never get any better. So I, it's, it's important to always keep learning. There's about learning new stuff that's that's fun. Like, oh you know, yeah. There's something about there's something about I don't know how to do something. I gotta figure it out, you know. Yeah. And um, I don't know. Well, and you always want to be growing. You yeah, know? yeah. <laughs> if you uh, if you feel like you've plateaued, then you have nowhere to That's go. That's probably the day I quit. So. Right, Because right, <laughs> right. something else will be interesting, you know. But luckily, I found with painting, it's there's always something to learn. There's, oh yeah. You know, there's always someone better than you. There's always something cool and new on the horizon, and it just makes it super fun. And it is cool when you see, uh, you know, painting contests or something. Mm -hmm. the, it, you can get so jazzed about, you know, the creativity that people yeah. bring to it and something new, something interesting that you may not have seen before. But uh, thanks everybody for joining us. We are here on the show floor at Gen Con, um, booth number 707. If you're at the show, definitely stop by and see us. Uh, check out the different sales and specials we have. Play in one of the demos. Check out the paint and take table. Um, where Aaron is giving out lessons and uh, pointers and judging, uh, critiquing your paint yeah. shops. <laughs> Heavy, and, harsh critiques. <laughs> and, um, and if you're not at Gen Con, hopefully you can enjoy some of our Gen Con online portion of, uh, of the events. We're doing some online games throughout the four days of Gen Con. We're doing uh, sales and specials on the web store. And there's even a virtual brimstone saloon where you can hang out with other fans and, uh, and chat. So uh, thank you guys, and we will see you next time.